Brick Fair, DC's LEGO Fan Festival is exactly one week away for the registered exhibitors, me being one of them, and it's on August the 5th for the registered people, which also happens to be my birthday. For the public, it's the 7th and the 8th of August. That's a Saturday and a Sunday. The hours are from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. We already have over 700 attendees registered, and we've already just gone over a thousand MOCs. So we're going to have a lot of different MOCs there at Brickfair this year, and I can suspect by the time it starts that we may be over 1,200 MOCs, maybe more. It's going to be really big. We're going to have the Chantilly Expo Center there. So we're going to have a lot of room with a lot of interesting MOCs there to see. So if you're available Saturday and Sunday, you better come out and see it because it will knock your socks off. I can assure you of that. Now, for me, this is kind of an update video on the Mindstorms projects. Back in January, I made a video saying about what I was going to be making and some ideas what I was going to do with the projects at that time. So this is going to be the result of that. Now, some stuff changed, some stuff didn't. So you'll see what I got. I'm looking at some of them right now in front of me here. I'll zoom in on it a little bit. This is that funny car that I talked about. It's actually what I call a rack and pinion steering car plus trailer as it's going to be named at Brick Fair. Right now it hasn't really much changed from the last time that video was put up back in January. It has some additional covers on it. The trailer has had some upgrades done to it. The trailer is now lighted so you can't really see it from here because of the ambient light being so high right now but in a video of it by itself I'll show that because the trailer has its own individual Lego lamp inside of it that illuminates it now so it makes it look pretty interesting and it does have the line following program set up it can't use something like the NXT test pad here because it the curves are too sharp for it the steering on it doesn't exactly work that well let me show it here That's the program there, and it pulls the trailer along with it, but you see. And I better stop it there. That was actually a glitch. Back it up away from that. <laughs> and see, it's very difficult to control it <laughs> with this remote. Because the old robotics adventure system that that's based on used an infrared remote like a television to operate the motors, programs, and to send IR messages to it for communications purposes. So it's not as easy as the IR remote of the power function stuff that you see there. Now speaking of that, if you remember the camera rover and that multi-purpose vehicle I had, well this is kind of built up from that. But that is, I call that DRAUPE. It stands for the caterpillar in German. And what I've done with that is actually I've doubled the length of the chassis. So if you could looked at the old Mindstorms video from January and looked at this one, you'll discover that this chassis is twice, maybe even two and a half times the length of that old chassis. It's also been risen up off the ground some by lowering the treads down so that it doesn't ride on the motors. Because if you looked at the old one, the carpet, it tends to lean down right on the carpet there. This one, it keeps it up so it can actually travel over obstacles a little bit better. And overall, it works a little bit better. And it's with the extended chassis, it has a dedicated spot for the camera now. The old camera rover, it actually used the bumper to mount it. And it didn't really work so well. This has a dedicated space for the... For this camera that I'm using right now, 
Yeah, and just using some rubber bands, it holds it snugly in place. So, it works really well for that now. And this may work for jousting at Brick Fair. They've got some robot jousting. This is the only thing I have that would work for that in that category. I don't have anything else. Now, moving on. Now, I know in the previous video I said that Dickie Bertha would retire. Well, it seems I kind of lied on that. Dickie Bertha, Dickie Bertha, Dickie Bertha got an overhaul. It had some modifications done to it. And some of them, it has a meaner looking front end on it now. I had a whole bunch of those claws left over from the NXT kits that I put them all together on the front there to act as a guard. And I also managed to put a touch sensor under there. So when it hits something with those, the, the front end there, it'll activate the touch sensor. So it act, effectively acts as a bumper on there. Uh, on the, the turret, the turret has undergone some changes too. I took the, the dual turntable part of it out that allows the gun to pivot like this because to me I found that to be the most useless part of the original Dickie Bertha. So I took that out and I put the motor on the side of the gun there and attached it to a Zamor launcher that I took off the second generation NXT kit and put it alongside the main gun which also actually only does three balls now. One of those I had to take away to use for the next uh, version of the ball machine, which I'll get to as well. That one hasn't changed much since the last video. And I put a little carrier rack for additional Zamor spheres. I can put it off to the side here. You can probably see them now. And there's a touch sensor on the back there now instead of the EOPD that I had back there. The act is an additional bumper for the rear. And also, one NXT controls the main gun and the Zamor launcher now. The other NXT controls the drivetrain and the rotation of the turret. So, the NXTs are set up a little bit better than the original Dickie Bertha was as well. And they communicate with Bluetooth to tell when it sees an object, when to stop, when to fire, that kind of thing. Now, quickly go through the last ones here. Now, this is the newest project. This, the theme of Brick Fair this year is music. So I came up with the idea of building a turntable, simulating playing an L, one of those LP discs. Now, of course, that's a fake one in there. But if anyone's seen the NX Tosh video of it playing music, that's what this does. This plays the same kind of music as that, except that I have it moving that fake LP disc inside and the arm on it can move back and forth and the lid can open and close so it kind of acts like a record player So something I thought of for this year's music theme getting on to the last two I won't really talk about the ball machine that's really the same right now as it was before that hasn't really changed I kind of just have to do some programming work and maybe some fixing on it to make sure that it's reliable but in the last minute here just talk about the brick sorter the brick sorter now has an extended chute on it so that it can hold 10 blocks nine of which gets sorted and one just helps push those blocks down the chute into the sorting tray and other than that it's pretty much the same with its own air compressor pneumatics belts that kind of thing it sorts three whites, three blacks, and three red two by four blocks. That's what I managed to get. I don't have any gray two by four blocks, but at least it works out fine. The light sensor can distinguish those three different shades with that on that system. So other than that, that's pretty much the update. I'll post a link on the side for the Brick Fair website for those that are interested in coming or want to see what MOCs we're going to have there and what hours and tickets you'll need.
So, see you later.